Good morning, gang. Happy Tuesday. All right, so how's your food budget look like? How are you liking inflation? How about your housing costs? Anybody paid attention to taxes? We are in tax season. Okay. Yeah, one insult to another injury is happening day by day here with what's going on. I want to go into a few things here. Uh, all about the coming disaster that the economy is going to be. And again, <clears throat> remember what many economists are calling is that we're going to see an economic crash sometime around the end of the second quarter, the beginning of the third quarter, conveniently right before the election. Uh, I got an interesting email from one of y'all yesterday, and it's very telling to what's going on with people. People are panicking. They're starting to make bad decisions or giving bad advice in order for self-preservation. Okay. One of y'all sent me an email yesterday. It said that they had recently sold their house and were looking to move to a small farm. Okay. Good idea. You know, somewhere they can raise more food. I don't know if they're in the suburbs or in the city or anything like that. Okay. But they're looking for a small farm. And should they buy now or should they hold off? And the realtor, of course, told them that they need to buy now, that prices aren't going down. Obviously, he hasn't taken a look recently as what's going on in the housing market. But his reasoning was this isn't the same as 2008. In 2008, we had a glut of vacant houses on the market, and now we don't have any. No, I'm sorry, I'm going to disagree with him. Uh, <clears throat> 2008 was the reason we had the problem, was they were giving anybody and everybody a mortgage. If you could walk and chew gum, you didn't have to prove your income, you didn't have to have any income, it was just, hey, we'll just give you a mortgage. Okay, and That's what happened. Well, what's going to happen here pretty soon is we are going to see a glut of houses on the market, what he's claiming is the pro what we had in 2008, for the simple reason that people are going to get foreclosed upon. Okay. Now you think about, why do I say that? Well, everything gets more expensive. Okay, And after the car is repossessed, and you're trying to figure out what to do to eat because you can't afford groceries, I'll get into that too, you come up with the answer of, oh shit, I can't afford the house. It's either move out and find somewhere else or eat. Okay, You kind of need to eat. Why do I say this? Well, there was an article that came out in the Wall Street Journal yesterday about 401k plans. Okay. A lot of people have 401ks, 403bs, whatever, even your IRA, some sort of retirement savings. Get this, emergency distributions from 401k plans in 2022 hit a record all time. In 2023, we broke the record and got even more, okay? You were talking about people taking money out of their retirement savings in order to save their house. Why? Or why do I say that? Nearly 40% of the people, because you've got to give a reason when you take out your emergency withdrawal, your hardship withdrawal, 40% of the people said to avoid foreclosure. Okay. It's a Band-Aid on a cancer. Yeah. Yeah. You just postpone the inevitable. If you have to tap into your 401k now to stay out of foreclosure, in six months, you're back in the same spot you were. And if you still don't have the income to pay for the house, guess what? Now you're foreclosed upon. Yeah, we're going to see a massive foreclosure event coming up relatively quickly. That'll be reminiscent of 2006 or 2008. Okay. We all remember what happened in the Great Recession. 
get ready for it again. But that's not the only thing, okay? Let's take a look at this. Let's take a look at food prices, okay? Part of the other thing that runs into what do we need to do? And this is why we need to be putting this stuff away as we can. Look at this chart right here, or this graphic, if you will. The hike in food prices. Now, some of the things preppers don't buy. Margarine. Okay, no. All right. But peanut butter, there's one, up 44%. Okay. Flour and prepared mixes, up 36%. Eggs, up 35%. Sugar, 34%. Steaks, whether you want to look at beef roasts or steaks, 38 and 34% respectively, okay? Canned vegetables, 32%. You can't add one-third to the people's expenses just for food and expect everything's going to be okay, okay? So there comes an issue. Well, now let's take a look at something else. Other goods that we buy. You guys know in 2010, China surpassed the United States as the number one manufacturer in the world. Okay, So for a decade and a half here, more, most of the stuff we're buying is no longer made in the U.S. Big problem. Okay. Who was president in 2010? Oh yeah, never mind. Uh, it's the same guy who's pulling the puppet strings now. Where does most of the stuff come from? China, of course. Maybe some from India or Vietnam or Indonesia or anything. But it mostly comes from Asia. And how's it shipped here? Well, the old slow boat from China, right? And we get a lot of imported goods that are traveled through the, the Red Sea and everything like that. Okay, the Suez Canal. Yeah, you guys know what's going on there? The Yemenis are targeting cargo ships and oil tankers with missiles. Okay. That pirates are in like crazy, taking, taking over ships. That a lot of companies will not even use their ships through the Suez Canal, will not go th through that route unless they have a armed military escort. Yeah, okay. They could always take the alternative route around the southern tip of Africa, which adds a couple of weeks to the trip. And, of course, adds a lot of expense to the goods because the companies that buy the stuff have to pay more for shipping to get it here. So they pass on those costs to you. Take a look at this. This are these are the retailers, the key retailers that do a lot of shipping through the Suez Canal. Anybody sharp shop at Target or Walmart? Yeah. So all those other things that you buy, clothing, furniture, household goods, pots and pans, etc., 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 is going to go up. In price, yeah, okay. We get into all the issues on how much it's going to cost us. Well, you know, if it costs us more money, it costs the government more money too, right? Because God knows, you know, I'm I'm betting with everything that's going on in Boeing right now, there's a lot of parts on airplanes that are made in China, you know, that have passed their 90-day warranty period, you know, the door on an airplane or the landing gear, for example, just falls off. You know, hey, that's normal. Yeah, right. Okay. Well, we have to pay for all this stuff. Right? The government needs more money. Joe put out his wonderful $7.3 trillion budget plan yesterday. Okay. You know, we're only 34 some point some, some odd trillion dollars in debt here. Why not add another 20% in one year? Okay, this is what we're looking at doing. 
Of course, this hopefully has no chance of, spend, uh, of passing, but you know, all the Democrats will vote for it, and eventually the rhinos will cave and they'll let Joe get what he wants. But let's take a look what's in there, okay? We're going to boost military spending, defense spending. Gee, I wonder where that's all going to go, okay? You know, by 11, or I'm sorry, by $9 billion, okay? Granted, it's still a lot of money. We're going to boost that to $895 billion. But pretty much the only thing that the government is responsible for is defending the country. Yeah, that's money well spent. Okay. Uh, we, of course, have to add another $8.7 billion for immigration aid. Somebody got to pay for all these hotel rooms and the food that the illegals are getting, right? We've got to send another $60 billion to Ukraine because... You know, Ukraine is the 51st state, just in case anybody didn't know. Okay. But the best one was this one. $1.6 trillion. Okay. What, what's that? Uh, a quarter of Biden's budget, thereabouts, in discretionary spending. In other words, pork. Okay. There's one thing in there, I mean, this, I think it was in Philadelphia, kills me. It's for some LGBTQ research center or resource center, and they want to give them a million dollars to put a sex room in the place for people to explore their sexual fetishes. That's in the federal budget. Okay. Now, like I said, this has hopefully no chance of passing. But how do we pay for $7.3 trillion. Oh, Joe's got a solution for that, too. We're going to raise corporate income tax, and we're going to raise income tax on what they call high-income earners. Now, the issue that we get with that, they keep throwing this $400,000 figure out there, which we know is bullshit. Any of you work for a small business, you know, mom and pop hardware store or own a convenience store or a smoke shop, a liquor store or anything like that, guess what? Chances are those stores make more than $400,000. So guess what? Their taxes go up. So guess what else goes up? Everything in the store that they have to sell because they need to make more money so they can pay more taxes. Oh, and we're going to raise corporate taxes. Well, you know, because cars are so inexpensive right now, right? Because anything you buy right now is so inexpensive right now. It's all going to go up. So we have food going up, taxes going up, retail goods going up, the housing market falling apart, the dollar collapsing, people taking money out of their retirement account, but vote for Biden because he's got all the answers. Pinball out.